Well, the Fed stimulus program has been a big driver of the current bull market, and today the Fed said that it will hold interest rates at historic lows and continued stimulus. The Fed also noted that inflation remains persistently below the target of 2%, which could pose additional risks to the economy. And joining us with more on this and other risks to the market is Barry James, president and CEO of the James Advantage Fund. James, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be here. So the markets didn't really react with much enthusiasm to the news that the Fed is keeping up the stimulus. Are investors just getting too used to the sugar that the impact has lessened? <laughs> it seems to be that way. If you, if you think of a day, it starts off in the, in the morning and then you get that bright sunshine and you go hide under the trees. And that's what we've had. The market's up you know, around 20% or so. And as the earnings have been coming out, a very interesting trend. Mm -hmm. If you take out the earnings of finance companies, they've lost money. They have been managing to beat <laughs> estimates, but they mostly have. because right. of some clever accounting, some cost exactly. cutting and beating on the, on the bottom line, but revenues have been down. Right, so there's a, there's a bit of a conundrum that investors have. The markets run up a lot, stocks are very volatile, bonds have gotten people scared, you know, precious metals have got people scared, so they don't really know what to do. They need to go back to their basics as they think about investing. Uh, number one is know yourself, don't get caught up in, in you know, all the fun of the big run up in the stock market, and then go back and diversify your portfolio and don't lose money. And the, surpri the surprising thing that people might find is that bonds may be just the opposite of what people are thinking today. They may be op an opportunity uh, for investors because everyone doesn't seem With to want With interest them. rates so low, why do you say that? Well, they popped up 1%. Interest rates have increased about 1% on the 10-year Treasury from 1.6 to 2.6%. And uh, that was all done on the rumor that they were going to stop this, this bond buying by the Fed. And we don't really see an economy that's in full gear. Anything less than 2% growth, it feels like a recession. And on the employment side, something very interesting, there are fewer people today as a percentage of the population that could be employed, employed than at the end of the recession. So even though there have been people getting jobs, right. the number of people coming on haven't filled up. Less than half of adults in the United States now have a job. So the there's still employment rate. That's yeah. very, very true today. So that's kind of a, a, a little bit of a, a fly in the ointment, even though we've been enjoying the good run up in the market. I want to focus quickly on what the Fed said with regards to inflation, saying it remains persistently right. below 2% and that this could pose a risk to the economy and to the markets. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't, I was talking with my son who's <laughs> today, and he said he didn't want to see high inflation. He says costs are high enough as it is sure. that uh, we want low inflation. And uh, I understand their fears of, of deflation and, and the problems that that can cause. But, but low inflation is not a problem for the economy, and uh, I wouldn't worry about it. So what is a problem for the economy? What are the biggest risks right now? How much of a concern is the slowdown in China for the U.S.? Well, I think uh, China is, is huge in terms of, uh, you know, both imports from China and exports, too, because they've been growing so rapidly. Uh, China, of course, is going through this rebalancing act, as it's been called, trying to go from more of an investment economy into a consumption economy, and they've got a long way to go. And that's one of the really good things for the U.S., because currently only about 34 percent of their spending is consumption. Here in the United States, it's 72 percent, so they can go a long way. And of course, there are a lot of uh, consumption uh, goods that we produce here in the United States that they could buy. So we're likely to see this transition period not go as smooth as they may want us to think it right. would be. But nonetheless, uh, it's going to be good, I think, in the end. You said earlier that investors should invest smartly. Can right. you make a smarter move than buying a standard ETF with all three indices up between 18 to 20 percent so far this year? Uh, <laughs> it's very difficult for me right now. I would have less than half of my money in stocks, to be honest. Uh, and the reason behind that is if you think stocks are going to be up another 20 percent in the last few months, then you'd buy them today. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're in a frothy air, area. And one thing that tells me that is that if you look at margin debt, people borrowing money to buy right. stocks, it's at a very high level. Now, it doesn't mean the market will correct, but once that starts to ease off, that's when the correction is. And there's way too much enthusiasm. I'm finding even 82-year-olds saying, get me more into the market, get me more you into the market. You know who you're sounding like? <laughs> no. When you say frothy enthusiasm, irrational exuberance. Uh-oh. <laughs> Our friend Alan Greenspan just before the housing market collapsed. Thank you so much. We're going to have to leave it there. Barry right. James, president and CEO of the James Advantage Fund.